Ryan, you play Neil Armstrong. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal of landing a man on the moon. How the heck did that happen? The movie me looks very concerned that I, that I don't mess this interview up. That happened because Damien Chazelle, I guess, felt like that was a good idea. Before we did La La Land, we met uh, about this project, but Neil's not someone that you could really, uh, you know, it takes a long time to, to learn about him because his life is pretty extraordinary. But why some say the moon? Why climb the highest mountain? We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. It was amazing to read First Man, Jim Hansen's book, because I realized I knew nothing about, about Neil and his wife Janet and their family and their personal experience of, of this mission. And uh, I felt very lucky to have had that period of time to just try and digest that before we started preparing for the film, because it's, there's just so many layers there. Five. What are the chances you're not coming back? Four. Those kids, they don't have a father anymore. Three. So you're going to sit the boys down? Two. And you're going to prepare them for the fact that you might not ever come home. One. Do you think you're coming back? There was a moment in the film that really struck me when I think it's his youngest child hugs him mm. before he goes to the moon and then his older child shakes him by the hand. We have every intention of coming back. We did so many incarnations of that scene trying to understand what would that moment be like where you had to explain to your kids that you may never come home and, and then have to explain why. How hard was it for you to express the family side of him with the humor and the warmth that the rest of the world didn't get to see? The hardest part of this film, and this was the most difficult role I've, I've ever had uh, for sure because not only is it this important uh, and iconic figure in history, but it's, um, you know, someone's dad. And Neil's sons weren't going to see a film about, a, you know, historical figure. They're going to see their father and their mother and, and them. You know, they were so involved, though, and so helpful and really wanted us to and me to understand a side of their father that, you know, only they could know. And that Neil was a very private person and he, he avoided the spotlight and he constantly found a way to shift the focus from himself to others. Brian, Neil, if it does turn out, you'll go down in history. What kind of thoughts do you have about that when the thought hits you? Uh, gosh, suppose that flight successful? We're planning on that flight being successful. Neil himself was a, um, I think a lot of people would say a hard person to know. He seemed remote to a lot of people. Neil, I was sorry to hear about your daughter. I'm sorry, is there a question? I've never had more help on a film between his sons or his late ex-wife Janet Armstrong or his sister June or childhood friends, co-workers, just everybody wanted to help me um, get this right. It was important to them. Um, what, I, what I mean is, uh, do you think it will have an effect? I think it would be unreasonable to assume that it wouldn't have some effect. There's a lot of weight on your shoulders, and I'm guessing here, but I would imagine 95% of the movie has you in it. But I'll say that the consolation to those who might be deterred by the fact that I'm in so much of this film <laughs> would be that Damien also chose to shoot this film from a POV perspective. A lot of the film, it is you, the audience, who are in the pilot seat. It's you staring at the console. It's you at the top of this rocket being shot into the atmosphere and sent to the moon. And it was exciting to know in this film that, that the audience was going to get to have the same experience that I was having. help thinking on occasions when you're flicking switches that you went, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Two, 
one, burn. Yeah, cross-check to manual. Yes, doors are secure. Yeah. <laughs> was, was there an element of, I hope what I'm saying is correct? I knew what I was saying was correct because it was pulled from the Capcom recordings. Mm -hmm. We have serious problems. We were so lucky to have technicians who were involved in every mission there. So for instance, when I was shooting the X-15 sequence, mm -hmm. there was Joe Engel, who's the last living X-15 pilot, was there. I had an earwig in my ear and he would talk me through what buttons I was pushing at the right time to make sure that they were accurate or at least close to accurate. Knowing myself, if I was in your shoes, I would be making rocket noises in my seat. Like I would be. I would be going, yeah, so we're flying now. <laughs> I know you didn't. Yeah, there may have been some of that. <laughs> But luckily they edited it they out. Snipped it out. Yeah. What was it like putting on the Apollo spacesuit for the first time? You know, all those things were uh, just surreal, especially after the research that we've done. And because of the way that Damien was shooting it in this documentary style, mm -hmm. and our references for the film were the documentaries of the missions. And there was such careful and meticulous work put into recreating the capsules and locations. You know, they rebuilt the Armstrong's home and mission control, you know, my stepfather came to set one day and he was looking around and he, he just had tears in his eyes and he said, this isn't a movie, Ryan. This is time travel. He's an emotional guy, so it's, it wasn't like strange to see him become emotional, but we are all having that feeling in some way at certain points. This movie just teaches you so much. One of the things I learned is that some American people pronounce Gemini. Jiminy. Jiminy. Yes. What are the facts that have stuck in your mind where you go, that is an amazing fact, I'll never forget it? One thing that we shot that we just couldn't fit into the film, but that there was a moment when they were trying to get off the moon where there was a technical problem that Buzz Aldrin f figured out how to fix by just jabbing a pen into it. And they were able to, to get off the moon. And it's an example of Buzz's genius. It's a responsibility. And why he was exactly the right choice to go to the moon but with Neil. It's exciting to be the first. If my wife is excited. She keeps slipping jewelry into my PPK. <laughs> You're planning on taking some of her jewelry to the moon, Buzz? Sure. What, what fella wouldn't want to give his wife bragging rights? <laughs> Neil, will you take anything? Uh, if I had a choice, I'd take more fuel. You know, we have this gilded image of the accomplishment as though it was something that was predestined and was always going to be a success, but it, it, it could have gone wrong at any second. Jan, the ship is stable. They're going to be all right. It was a really hard-earned victory, and, and the technology was so limited. Jen, you have to trust us. We've got this under control. No, you don't. All these protocols and procedures to make it seem like you have it under control. But you're a bunch of boys making models out of balsa wood. You don't have anything under control. You know, it's examples like that, like just jabbing a pen into the console would somehow allow you to to get off the moon is just, you know, fascinating detail. But there's so many we couldn't, you know, fit them all into the film. The rotation sequences when the capsule starts spinning, how were they shot? Well, we were in a gimbal for all of these mission sequences. They just kept, like, replacing the capsule. So first it was the X-15, then it was the uh, Jiminy 8, and then it was the uh, Apollo 11 capsule. It's beautiful. Damien had just gone the extra mile by not having a green screen. He got a giant LED screen so that everything could be shot in camera. So everything happening outside of the window of the capsules was, was happening for us as well. Here we go. Authenticity was important, and so part of that was for Damien to communicate just how dangerous this was and how flimsy these things were in some ways and how, like, it was the equivalent. They called them spam in a can. Somebody got a Swiss Army knife. A Swiss Army knife? Are you kidding me? When you're in them, you, you understand that analogy um, in a very real way. And there was just a lot of shaking. I don't remember a lot of it. I just remember hearing Damien yell, more shaking. The rest is, is kind of a blank. That's going to be one of your favorite bits of direction over the years. <laughs> I don't care about Ryan, just more shaking. Just more shaking. Can I ask you what mementos you kept from this film? Because obviously they kept mementos from going to the moon. When Joe Angle was trying to teach me how to fly the X-15, he brought an X-15 model. When the film was over, he gave me a signed X-15 model, which I'm very grateful to have. When you have these mementos, do you have to wonder where you'll put them in your house? You don't want to be that guy where people come in and they go, yeah, we get it. <laughs> you played Neil Armstrong. <laughs> where, where are you going to keep it? Where does this stuff go? Well, I don't have a lot of it. I just have that. My kids play with it a lot, so and you're like, that's whoa, where that whoa. goes. But it's in good hands. Okay, that's where good. it should be. If you could have told younger Ryan Gosling before he got involved with this project, what would have been the thing you'd have said? Just brace yourself. 
Time travel's possible. <laughs> you can make a lot of money on that deal if you get on this now. <laughs> Here's the sports and I'd inform him of whatever technology it was that got me there, and I would have him invent it. That's a really good point. Now I think about it, this is why I regret asking this question. <laughs> because otherwise you get into Back to the Future stuff, and we get into trouble. Um, I can't wait for the sequel, which involves time travel. I don't know what space exploration will uncover, but I don't think it'll be exploration just for the sake of exploration. I think it'll be more the fact that it allows us to see things that maybe we should have seen a long time ago, but just haven't been able to until now. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank That's you. Very emotional. Yeah. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. In the past or future. <laughs> At first I was like, should I be on the floor? And am I, am I always looking up? But I can't really do the voice if I'm looking up. So you talk and this mic picks it up. That's right. Take it easy. Take it easy, Brando. <laughs> Can we get claws? Can I just, I just think I need claws. One.